the 8th of April in the year 2000, Judy and I visited the village of Mount Sorrel, where we spent three days. The reason for this visit, which was of special interest to me, was because this was the home of my mother in her early years and during most of her life. My mother was born Marjorie May Yates on the 17th of September 1902 at 43 Wood Street, Earl Shilton in Leicester. The eldest child of Edward and Lavinia Yates, she lived with her parents and siblings in Mount Sorrel in Leicestershire until coming to Australia with her family in September 1925. She married my father Malcolm Pascoe on the 9th of March 1929 at the Leadable Congregational Church, but sadly she died on the 4th of January 1930, the day that I was born. Mount Sorrel lies seven miles north of the city of Leicester on the road to Loughborough. The road still passes through the village, but today a bypass road skirts Mount Sorrel, taking the majority of the Loughborough traffic away from the centre of the town. From a rough pencil sketch in our possession, we knew where to look when we arrived at Mount Sorrel. We were hoping to find the houses where my mother lived and the Wesleyan church where the family worshipped. We had booked into the Riverbank Bed and Breakfast on Salby Road, which we found to be central to the places we wished to visit. Our accommodation was alongside a marina and weir where the Saw River tumbles into a large water basin. We were then able to dine at the Waterside Inn, which was just across the canal and the Stone Arch Bridge and right alongside of the lock. We were also quite close to the old schoolhouse and St Peter's School in Watling Street and close to the houses where we believed my grandparents lived. The road through the centre of the village is divided into three sections. Leicester Road to the south, Market Place and Loughborough Road to the north. Market Place is bounded by the Butter Market on the corner of Watling Street and the Mount Sorrel Saxon Preaching Cross on the corner of Sileby Road. We found the people of Mount Sorrel to be most friendly. We enjoyed our time there and were grateful for the help we received from all of the folk we met during our stay. This tape is just a short record of some of the sights we saw, the people we met, and the history we found in Mount Sorrel. Arriving at Mount Sorrel, we turned off Market Place into Salby Road which passes over the Saw River and the canal. Crossing over the river, we turned left into our accommodation just prior to the arched bridge over the canal. We were accommodated at the Riverbank Bed and Breakfast residence of Mrs Boone. The building consisted of several bedrooms with a dining room at one end where breakfast was served each morning. Situated on the River Saw and with the canal running behind the building, this was obviously an ideal setting for a marina of pleasure craft. It seems Mr Boone began renovating boats after the war and purchased this place in Salby Lane. His main business, according to our information, is that of Ship Chandler and the renting of pleasure craft in the area. After 
settling in, we strolled across the road to the lock and became absorbed in watching as a pleasure craft moved into the lock in preparation for lowering to the level of the river below. The river falls several feet here, as can be seen from the weir on the other side of the marina, and it is necessary for boats to be lowered or lifted in the lock alongside the waterside inn. The lock gates can easily be man handled by a large extension arm. When this is necessary, the water is at equal pressure on each side of the gate, making it a very simple task. A valve is then opened in the gates at the other end of the lock and once the water starts to flow, the water in the lock decreases rapidly to the new level. As we waited, it seemed to take about 10 minutes for the water level to reach the lower level of the river. The gates were then opened and the boat and crew were soon on their way downstream. We then walked up Salby Road and turned right into Loughborough Road, admiring the various buildings as we went. Our first consideration was to find Crown Lane, where my grandparents, my mother and the family lived, at what we believed was number eight. A Methodist church was built on the corner of Crown Lane in 1905, and my aunt remembers it well. However, we are not certain whether this is that church or a newer building in its place. Arriving at number 8 Crown Lane, we spent some time looking around the area. We knocked at the door but there was no answer. It was obvious that there was no one home, so we were unable to contact the present occupiers. This was a disappointment as it would have been interesting to have talked with them and learned something of the past and recent history of the house. By the look of the external paintwork, and the interesting front door, it appeared that the house may well have been recently renovated. The houses in this street have been built on the fields which used to be part of Home Farm, which was opposite number eight Crown Lane. Opposite Crown Lane on Loughborough Road, 
we came across the mill house. The mill was demolished, but the mill house and three cottages remained standing. In its day, the mill had two large water wheels driving the machinery, and the flour it produced was often transported by the local quarry railway line to the LMS railway for delivery to other parts of the country. It was also transported by canal barge. Leaving Crown Lane, we now ventured further along Loughborough Road towards the steel bridge, which my Aunt Nora, when a small girl, knew as the Black Bridge. We visited this fish and chip shop, which in earlier days was Brian's Bakery. The proprietor, Tony, was kind enough to give us a map and a book on the history of Mount Sorrel. The building on the right was the other home in which Vern's grandparents and family lived at one time. Unfortunately, it too was vacant and we were unable to make contact with the present owners. We ventured on along Loughborough Road photographing several old buildings along the way. The large entrances for carts to enter and the imaginative facades of some of the buildings were quite interesting. Finally we reached the junction of Bond Lane and these buildings appeared to have been done up not so long ago. Looking back to where we expected to find the old Wesleyan chapel, where Vern's grandparents worshipped, we were disappointed to find a Hyundai car yard in its place. We were pleased, however, when the owner approached us and welcomed us, explaining that the chapel had been demolished in 1972. The vestry of the chapel still stands at the rear of the car yard and is now being used as a paint shop by the Hyundai dealer who allowed us into the building to video these old remains of what must have been a very interesting structure having been built in 1897. At one time three Methodist churches existed in Mount Sorrel. Late in 1962 they united and one united group was formed and met in these premises until 1970 when a new modern church was built in Churchill Road. The inside of the old building was rather dark and gloomy. No work was being carried out on cars at that time, probably because it was a Saturday afternoon. The walls and ceiling were very smoke blackened, no doubt from many years of baking the paint on the car bodies. We were interested in a newspaper cutting the car dealer showed us regarding the demolition of the church back in 1972. We were rather attracted to the stonework and finish of this building, which looked as though it was fairly new or had recently been renovated. A 
this point, we again photographed some of the local buildings in the area, some old, some not so old. All seem to add their own charm to this village of Mount Sorrel, a village which has a lot of history dating back to the 9th or 10th century. History states that a castle was built here in 1080, and early Britons made their homes here. During the 17th century, skulls of wild boar and woolly rhinoceros were reported to have been found in the area, which had evidently been forest land extending through Charnwood Forest into Derbyshire. This was as far as we went up Loughborough Road. The final zoom shot shows the houses extending for quite some distance on either side of the road. On our return we passed the quarry entrance. Local granite has been used since Roman times, but systematic quarrying of granite in Mount Sorrel commenced in the late 18th century and modern technology has enabled it to become the largest of its kind in Europe. This building bears the name Granite Company at the entrance and would appear to be the offices of Redlands Aggregates, the company operating the quarry today. There were many public houses in Mount Sorrel, one of which was the Railway Inn formerly known as the Cricketer's Arms. We had passed back under the rail bridge. Whereas locomotives once passed over this bridge, it now supports a conveyor belt from the quarry, linking it to the main railway line. We moved back along Loughborough Road to Salby Road again and took the opportunity to video some of the decorations on the facade of this building and presumably items for sale. We saw very few pedestrians around that Saturday afternoon but the vehicular traffic was considerably heavy. The earliest recorded population was compiled in 1377 when the inhabitants numbered 156. By 1901 the population was recorded as being 2,417 and today the figure stands at more than 6,000. This Adam style house known as Mount Sorrel Hall was built in 1783 for a Mr. Ralph Tebbett. It was purchased for the vicarage of St. Peter's in the 1890s. Since 1983, it has been a private dwelling and is still considered to be one of the finest and most impressive buildings in the village. The cross at the intersection of Salby Road and Loughborough Road marks one end of Market Place, which extends south to Watling Street. In 1292, the Lord of the Manor was given the right to hold markets in Mount Sorrel each Monday, and in the 18th and 19th centuries, the market became of considerable importance. A modern library, built in 1964, stands on the opposite side of Market Place. Next to the library is St Peter's Church, originally built in the 14th century as the chapel of St John the Baptist.
The corner of Watling Street marks the other end of Market Place and from here south the road is known as Leicester Road. A two-storey white building in Leicester Road captured our attention. The Grapes was originally the Black Swan, a coaching inn. It was purchased in 1884 by a Mr Bars, who was a temperance supporter. The beer licence was abolished and the beer was emptied into the yard. It then became the venue for the weekly band practice. As we continued down Leicester Road, we came by the old United Methodist Church. This was built by a breakaway group, but in 1907 they joined with other breakaway branches and became known as the United Methodists. The Bull and Mouth was another of the numerous public houses in Mount Sorrel. This name is thought to be a corruption of the words Boulogne Mouth. We found the post office in Leicester Road and were able to send our mail home together with some postcards depicting local scenes in Mount Sorrel and registering the Mount Sorrel postmark. Built in 1879, the Baptist Church, a brick building with its interesting random rubble stone facing and its fine arches attracted our attention. It is recorded that the Baptists worshipped in Mount Sorrel as far back as 1645 to 1650. It is also recorded that the celebrated hymn writer and preacher, Dr. Isaac Watts, visited Mount Sorrel on many occasions. The Stag and Pheasant was another of the old public houses well known in Mount Sorrel. The title Free House, we were told, was given to public houses in England that did not have ties with any particular brewery, but were free to trade with whom they pleased. We walked no further down Leicester Road than Strawn Close. At this point, we decided to walk around some of the streets away from the main road. We now found ourselves amongst a number of buildings which were of a more recent vintage. Mount Sorrel has an impressive history. During the 1960s and 70s, Rolls-Royce employed more than 1,200 workers manufacturing engine parts in their aeronautical industry. Farming was carried out in the 1800s. In the late 19th century, there were two blacksmiths in the village. A glove making industry dates back to 1591. The hosiery industry reached Mount Sorrel in the 18th century. The shoe making industry in Mount Sorrel dates back to 1828 and in 1803 bricks were made near the quarry. Anyone visiting Mount Sorrel will immediately identify the village by the butter market. Situated at the corner of Market Place and Watling Street, this construction has been defined 
as a neoclassical rotunda of eight Tuscan columns supporting a low stepped dome topped by an urn. It was built in 1793 by the Lord of the Manor, Sir John Danvers, to replace the historic 15th century market cross, which he had had removed to his own park at Swithland Hall, where it still stands today. As far back as 1742, a free school was started by Sir Joseph Danvers, and in 1840, Miss Rebecca Jacks started a private school in a small building at the rear of her house, next to the present library. In 1871, St Peter's School was built in Watling Street. This magnificent old stone and brick building appears to have been closed as a school in 1973 and has now become a private property. Further up Watling Street was this brick building which said 10A, the old schoolroom. From the Mount Sorrel Millennium map, we discovered that it was the first primitive Methodist church or chapel and later became St Peter's School Cookery Room. Vern's Aunt Nora remembers walking to St Peter's School in this street, so it seems most likely his mother and the rest of his uncles and aunts attended these schools early in the 1900s. I walked further up Watling Street which turned out to be a rather steep climb. Finally, I found a stepped pathway which led up onto Castle Hill. This proved to be a great vantage spot from which to get an overall view of the surrounding area. The castle that stood here was built in 1080 by Hugh Lupus, Earl of Chester, and a nephew of William the Conqueror but it was destroyed in 1217 on the orders of Henry III, who ordered it to be razed to the ground, describing it as a nest of devils and a den of thieves and robbers. Down in the Saw Valley could be seen the bypass road snaking its way around the village. The road was opened in 1991. On top of the hill stands the war memorial made of local pink granite. It was dedicated in August 1926. The granite hill was high above the meadows of the Saw River and provided a natural vantage point from which to view and photograph the surrounding countryside and the village below. This seemed to be an appropriate scene with which to bring part one of our visit to Mount Sorrel to a close.
ਠੀਕ ਹੈ